Hello YouTube, this is Marco. I'm your local watch cardinal bringing you another video today talking about my experience, my recent experience at a Rolex authorized dealer. Of course, before we begin, I'd like to talk about uh, kind of some of my past experiences, which have been unfortunately quite negative. So I've been to two authorized dealers before I went uh, to this one recently. And unfortunately, they both turned me away. I mean, they wouldn't even acknowledge my presence. These were uh, kind of multi-brand authorized dealers. So they would sell brands like Omega and Tudor and uh, Elong and Zone and so on and so forth. And, you know, these are pretty big AD. So I understand ultimately, maybe they have a lot of customers, but I, I was kind of uh, cheesed off by the fact, if you will, uh, that I was just turned away, wasn't even spoken to, and my presence wasn't even acknowledged. So that was something, unfortunately, that, you know, kind of turned me away from Rolex for a little bit, because I, I was just like, man, w why do I need to put up with this kind of showcase experience uh, just to get a watch that I ultimately could pay a little bit more um, and get it get it on the pre-owned market? Uh, as you may know, if you've watched videos in the past, or if you watch Archie Luxury live streams, obviously, I'm a university student. And one of the watches that kind of got me into watches or made me fall in love with watches was the Rolex Explorer 1. I'd love to get the 214-270, so the 39 millimeter version. Of course, at retail would be better because the price is cheaper, uh, just simply for that reason. And of course, I would love to also have kind of the showroom experience at the same time. I mean, it is my first Rolex. I think that your first Rolex should be bought at an authorized dealer if possible. And then ultimately, you know, you can go whichever way you decide. Uh, so talking about my experience this time around, uh, I think I was very, very fortunate. I was greeted by a nice young man. He was probably only a couple of years older than me. He also seemed like a watch collector or at least somebody who enjoyed watches because I think he was wearing a vintage Universal Genève. So props to him on that. We started talking a little bit about watches, what I'm looking to collect, why I like watches and so on and so forth. And it was kind of, you know, a nice discussion. I was greeted by the manager of the store. And ultimately, I was placed not on the wait list, but I guess you can call it the short list of people to get the Explorer. So all in all, I think the experience overall was pretty good. Uh, I did also get a Rolex catalog, which is pretty nice, I guess. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't walk away with the Explorer one on my wrist, but hey, it is what it is. Overall, what I'd like to kind of uh, convey to you guys, maybe who already own Rolex or or maybe who don't own Rolex at all, is not to be uh, kind of shy to walk into a Rolex authorized dealer, right? A lot of you probably are watching this video and have a Rolex already and are, you know, in, in good in good standing with a Rolex authorized dealer, but some of you may be watching and don't have a relationship whatsoever. And my message to you guys is don't be afraid to walk into an authorized dealer. At the end of the day, the, the worst thing that can happen is they turn you down. Now, what I tell you, walk in and start asking for a Pepsi or a Panda. I mean, that would just be a little out of reach in my opinion. The odds of you getting one or even getting on the wait list are slim to none at best. But you know, a Submariner, maybe a Mill Gauss, an Explorer 2 or an Explorer 1, uh, an Air King. These are all models that are an Oyster Perpetual. You know, these are all models that, you know, necessarily are not in super, are in high demand, but not are not in super high demand as kind of the models I mentioned previously. And also, again, as I mentioned earlier, the worst thing that can happen is the Rolex authorized dealer just turns you away, right? As I, as I happen to experience in the past, right? They just don't acknowledge your presence or they tell you, no, I'm sorry. You know, we can't put you on the, the waiting list for the watch or what have you. And, and, and that's it. That, that's the end of your experience with that Rolex authorized dealer. So to me personally, I've been to three Rolex authorized dealers and the third one was successful. The third trip was successful and being able to be put on kind of the shore list and, and put my name down to ultimately get the Explorer sometime within the next few months, uh, hopefully, of course. Uh, so I'd like to personally get it if I can before I graduate university. I'm graduating pretty shortly, so that would be nice. But again, no promises, obviously. And I think what this, this kind of experience overall sums up is just to be patient, guys. Uh, the, the number one thing in watch collection is we don't need to do things kind of on a whim or on a dime. I think it's it's a lot more, uh, I guess, a lot more rational to look at things from a long-term perspective as opposed to a short-term one and think, oh, I'm just going to pick up a model that I really like or that, you know, is very high in demand at the moment, as opposed to getting something that you genuinely enjoy, you know, kind of waiting for it, working for it a little bit, and then getting that kind of delayed gratification once you actually get it. I think there's nothing wrong with waiting at the end of the day. 
you know, I'm personally someone who doesn't have tens of millions of dollars. Unfortunately, while I could buy the watch on the pre-owned market, no problem. I just don't think financially speaking, it, it makes any sense because an Explorer is not a super in-demand model. And at the end of the day, Rolex does make what about a million watches a year. So there's no reason why I can at the very least be put on a wait list and save kind of the extra couple hundred to thousands of dollars ultimately in uh, in gray market pricing and of course in import duties uh, by buying the Explorer on the pre-owned market. So that's just my take and my opinion on things. Overall, what I would like to communicate to you guys is this. Don't be afraid to walk into a Rolex authorized dealer. Don't be afraid to chat with the sales associates. The worst thing that can happen is they can turn you away and tell you to uh, listen, to uh, go shop somewhere else. I guess you can put it that way. But you know, you never know what might happen. You might also get be put on a wait list or ultimately walk out with the watch on the same day. Ultimately, I would say fortune favors the bold and those who are willing to take risks, be a little patient and ultimately uh, look at things from a long-term perspective as, a, as opposed to a short-term one are going to be more successful in the long run. So that's my video today. Just a quick brief uh, kind of summary of my experience at a Rolex authorized dealer. Let me know down in the comment section below if you've ever had kind of any negative or positive experiences with your authorized dealer, what your standing is with them. And of course, please feel free to like the video to subscribe for more in the future. And again, guys, this is Marco. I'm your local watch cardinal and I'll see you guys in the next one.